Applied Linguistics Group uploaded this video for BS English students. Dr. Khalid Malik, the founder, has a PhD in Applied Linguistics TESOL. Having more than 25 research papers, he taught at many foreign universities and is now in a postdoctoral study program abroad. Join Applied Linguistics Group at youtube.com slash at 1966 Pakistani or use a QR code TO join our Facebook group at A brief look at the history with special focus on the 20th and 21st centuries. The history of translation through the 20th century. Introduction Tracing the course of the development of the translation theories during the 20th century. It would be relevant to suggest regarding theoretical perspectives of translation to certain linguistic theories, which represent different approaches to the translation of this particular period. Such translation theories might be listed as follows. Walter Benjamin's theory which regards language as the representation of thought and reality, the 1900s in 1930s, John Paul Venery's and Jean Darbelnet's theory which focuses on the debate whether translation can reconcile the distinct features which separate different languages and cultures. 1940s in 1950s, Roman Jacobson's theory, dominated by the fundamental concern of translatability. 1940s, 1950s, and George Steiner's theory, based on the controlling concept, 1960s, 1970s. While discussing Walter Benjamin's translation theory, the 1900s in 1930s. That represents and establishes the viewpoint of the majority of linguists of the first third of the 20th century. It is necessary to note that it was raised based on the German literary and philosophical thought, trends of Romanticism culture, interpretational and existential phenomenology, Venuti, 2004. Therefore, great attention in this theory is paid to the autonomy of translation, to the status, and the text's rights. The translation work is regarded here as derivative, but independent at the same time. Such equilibration can be seen in the essay of Benjamin of 1923, where he performs the translation practices of the foreign text Ubelieben, Afterlife. I refer to Walter Benjamin's approach used here, then it can be seen that the translation is regarded as not mere transmit process of the text message, but as the recreation of the conditions and values of that time when that particular text was created. For this purpose Walter Benjamin implements such linguistic translation techniques and concepts as pure language, a sense of how the mutually exclusive differences among languages coexist with complementary intentions to communicate and to refer, intentions that are derailed by the differences, applicable to W. Benjamin's theory, page 71. The strategy, used by this theorist, is based on the release of the language through the translation containing the literalisms in syntax. Such a theoretical technique is aimed to draw the reader from the standard language's usage. In his reasoning, Benjamin relies on Schleiermacher's foreignizing notion concerning the translation process, wherein the reader is supposed to be brought as much close as possible to the original foreign source, with the help of the creative transformation of the translating language, while reading the translated text. In Afterlife, Benjamin compares and tries to find certain links between the phenomena of art, literature, the historical course of events, consistency of the raise and fall of the public interest to some art and literary works, and the phenomenon of translation. Establishing his theoretical approach, Benjamin suggests that the translation, unlike art, cannot claim permanence for its products. Its goal is undeniably a final, conclusive, decisive stage of all linguistic creation. In translation the original rises into a higher and purer linguistic air, as it were, it points the way to this region, the predestined, hitherto inaccessible realm of reconciliation and fulfillment of languages, Benjamin, 1995, page 79. This theoretical approach suggests that even after the transmit process of the surface of the text, the primary issue of the genuine translator stays elusive. Following this, it is possible to state that Benjamin's translation theory consists of the two crucial, but in a certain way competing tendencies approaches a formalist interest in technique implemented in the innovative translation, methods of the new foreign texts interpretations, and functionalism, marked by the usage of cultural and political agendas in the translation of the foreign texts. Logically by the periodical criteria, 
it can be suggested to the path to the Canadian linguists Jean-Paul Vienerys and Jean Darbelnet's theory, the 1940s, 1950s, which concerns the ability of the translation procedure to reconcile the distinct features which separate different languages and cultures, and is considered as the most influential in the fifth decade of the 20th century. The work regarding the translation studies within the frameworks of this theory was published in 1958, and shortly became a staple in training programs in the translator field for more than four decades. John Paul Vinery and Jean Darbelnet, by approaching French-English translation from the field of comparative stylistics, became capable of providing a theoretical basis for a variety of translation methods currently in use, applicable to J. P. Vinery's and J. Darbelnet's theory, page 114. The translation methods drawn up by those scholars involve the reduction of cultural and linguistic differences about the empiricist semantics, equivalence of messages, ultimately relies upon an identity of situations. Where the term, situation, indicates an undefined, reality. Where can be seen a close connection between linguistic procedures and, metalinguistic information. The current state of literature, science, politics, etc. of both language communities, Vinery and Darbelnet, 1995, page 42. In their Methodology for Translation, those scholars see the two ways of the translation, the direct, literal, translation and the oblique translation with the respect to the notions of parallel categories, parallel concepts, drawn from the metalinguistic parallelisms, and gaps, lacunae, in the target language, TL. I accordance with Vinery and Darbelnet, there are three kinds of direct procedures, borrowing, karik, literal translation, and two kinds of oblique procedures, transposition, and modulation, Vinery and Darbelnet, 1995, pp 128 to 133. Therefore, it may be firmly asserted that this theory overcomes the philosophical qualms and disputes about translatability by drawing away attention from the conservative rules about the usage of language in the translation process. Such disobedience to the steady translation canons differs Jean-Paul Vinery's and Jean Darbelnet's translation theory from Walter Benjamin's translation theory of the previous decades. It also criticizes the translation process in the context of the global political economy. Another theory of the same period is Roman Jacobson's theory, the 1940s and 1950s dominated by the fundamental concern of translatability, and a little bit different in its methodological approach from the Vinerys and Darbelnet translation theory. In his work on linguistic aspects of translation, Jacobson pays great attention to the linguistic and semiotic facts within the frameworks of understanding the word's meaning. In his reasoning, the author relies on the other scholars a Bertrand Russell's statement that no one can understand the word cheese unless he has a non-linguistic acquaintance with cheese, Russell, 1950, page 3. With a view to resolve this confusion, Jacobson suggests distinguishing three ways of the verbal signs interpreting translation into other signs and symbols of the same language, translation into another language, and translation into the different non-verbal symbolic system. These ways of the verbal signs interpreting are labeled by the author as follows. Intralingual translation or rewording is an interpretation of verbal signs utilizing other signs of the same language. Interlingual translation or translation proper is an interpretation of verbal signs utilizing some other language. And, intersemiotic translation or transmutation is an interpretation of verbal signs using signs of nonverbal sign systems. Jacobson, 1995 page 139. While drawing up his translation theory, Jacobson considers the untranslatability dogma also studied by the linguist Benjamin Lee Huerf, who claimed that facts are unlike to speakers whose language background provides for unlike formulation of them, Huerf, 1956, page 235. Therefore, Roman Jacobson suggests that the linguistic transform is possible as most signs can be translated into such signs that appear to the reader more developed and precise. In his work, Jacobson draws up the discussion concerning the cognitive function of language. He states that within its frameworks, language is quite independent of the grammatical pattern as the definition of one's experience remains in complementary relation to metalinguistic operations. 
Therefore, the cognitive level of language not only admits but directly requires recoding interpretation, i.e., translation. Jacobson, 1995, page 141. Applying his approach to poetry, the linguist asserts that in these cases the verbal equations become a constructive element of the text. He suggests that the constituents of the verbal code, roots, prefixes, affixes, various phonemes, and different categories of syntax and morphology are confronted, juxtaposed, brought into contiguous relation according to the principle of similarity and contrast and carry their autonomous signification. Jacobson, 1995, page 142. This twofold assumption is quite similar to the concept suggested by the famous Russian linguist and literary scholar recognized all over the world, Vladimir Nabokov, who suggests in his work that the translation of certain literary masterpieces requires from the translator almost unattainable ideal transmit process. Nabokov, cited from applicable to Jacobson's theory, page 113. Following this, it would be relevant to pass on George Steiner's theory, the 1960s, 1970s, based on the controlling concept. Unlike the other theorists in the linguistic and literary sphere of that period, in his works, Steiner does not focus on the understanding of the translating as the communication with the foreign text by drawing up the relationship of identity and analogy with such text, instead, he returns to the hermeneutic and German Romanticism traditions, also shared by Walter Benjamin's translation theory. George Steiner defines translating as an interpretation of the foreign text that is at once profoundly sympathetic and violent, exploitive and ethically restorative, applicable to George Steiner's theory, page 150. George Steiner's study in the field under consideration, called After Babel, 1975, is currently used by numerous linguists and literary scholars. As it has been already pointed out, the given work opposes those linguists who understand the communication element as the crucial one within the literary and philosophical approach in their theories. Contrary to them, the author does do not regard language as the instrument within the frameworks of communicating meaning. Nevertheless, the scholar does not deny its existence and understands it as the constitutive in the language's reconstruction. Steiner underlines the individualistic sides of language, the privacies of individual usage, that resist interpretation and escape the universalizing concepts of linguistics, Steiner, 1975, p. 205. In the work, The Hermeneutic Motion, Steiner recovers the notion of the same name as follows, the act of elicitation and appropriative transfer of meaning, which is fourfold. There is initiative trust, an investment of belief, underwritten by previous experience but epistemologically exposed and psychologically hazardous, in the meaningfulness, in the seriousness of the facing or, strictly speaking, adverse text, Steiner, 1975, page 193. With the regard to this, the author represents a concept in which he regards the process of translation as a hermeneutic of trust, Steiner, 1975 page 197. It has been mentioned that Steiner follows the same tradition as Benjamin, nevertheless, he disagrees with the scholar Schleiermacher strongly supported by Benjamin, in the recommendation that German translators signal the foreign readers of the foreign text, and argues that, great translation must carry with it the most precise sense possible of the resistant, of the barriers intact at the heart of understanding, Steiner, 1975, page 378. In the 20th century, Aniela Zagorska, a Polish translator, translated from 1923 to 1939 nearly all the works of her uncle Joseph Conrad, a Polish-British novelist who wrote in English. In Conrad's view, translation, like other arts, involved choice, and choice implied interpretation. Conrad would later advise his niece, don't trouble to be too scrupulous. I may tell you that in my opinion it is better to interpret than to translate. It is, then, a question of finding the equivalent expressions. And there, my dear, I beg you to let yourself be guided more by your temperament than by a strict conscience, cited in Zdysla Najda, Joseph Conrad, A Life, 2007. Jorge Luis Borges, an Argentine writer, essayist and poet, was also a notable translator of literary works from English. French and German to Spanish in the 1960s. He translated, 
while subtly transforming, the works of William Faulkner, Andre Gide, Hermann Hesse, Franz Kofka, Rudyard Kipling, Edgar Allan Poe, Walt Whitman, Virginia Woolf, and others. Borges wrote and lectured extensively on the art of translation, holding that a translation may improve upon the original, may even be unfaithful to it, and that alternative and potentially contradictory renderings of the same work can be equally valid, Wikipedia. Other translators consciously produced literal translations, especially translators of religious, historical, academic and scientific works. They adhered closely to the source text, sometimes stretching the limits of the end language to produce a non-idiomatic translation. A new discipline named translation studies appeared in the second half of the 20th century. The term translation studies was coined by James S. Holmes, an American Dutch poet and translator of poetry, in his seminal paper The Name and Nature of Translation Studies, 1972. While writing his own poetry, Holmes translated many works from Dutch and Belgian poets into English. He was hired as a professor in the new Institute of Interpreters and Translators, later renamed the Institute of Translation Studies, created in 1964 by the University of Amsterdam. Interpreting was seen as a specialized form of translation, spoken translation instead of written translation, before becoming a separate discipline in the mid-20th century. Interpreting studies gradually emancipated from translation studies to concentrate on the practical and pedagogical aspect of interpreting. It also included sociological studies of interpreters and their working conditions, while such studies are still sorely lacking for translators to this day. Conclusion Concluding it can be suggested that the concept of the translation theory progressed with time. The understanding of the better way of translation has been added and changed, sometimes even recognized again after the decades. It is impossible to call any of those theories incorrect or groundless, as they all correspond to the surrounding environment, world outlook of the scholars, and scientific tradition of the time during which they were created and operated. In the 21st century, like their ancestors, contemporary translators contribute to the enrichment of languages. When a target language lacks terms that are present in a source language, they borrow those terms, thereby enriching the target language. Translation studies have become an academic interdiscipline that includes various fields of study, comparative literature, history, linguistics, philology, philosophy, semiotics, terminology, computational linguistics. Students also choose a speciality, legal, economic, technical, scientific or literary translation, in order to be trained accordingly. The internet has fostered a worldwide market for translation and localization services, and for translation software. It has also brought many issues, with precarious employment and lower rates for professional translators, and the rise of unpaid volunteer translation including crowdsource translation. Bilingual people need more skills than two languages to become good translators. To be a translator is a profession and implies a thorough knowledge of the subject matter. After being highly regarded alongside literary, academic and scientific authors for two millennia, many translators have become invisible in the 21st century and their names are often forgotten on the articles, books, websites and other content they spent days, weeks or months to translate. Despite the omnipresent CAT, computer-assisted translation, and MT, machine translation, tools created to speed up the translation process, some translators still want to be compared to artists, not only for their precarious life, but also for the craft, knowledge, dedication, and passion they put into their work. Modern Translation Printing Press and its Impact on Translation and Language Usage before the introduction of the printing press, when few people could read, most written texts were in Latin. The printing press, though, had a profound impact on language use and people's literacy. The use of Latin declined as texts could now be translated and even published in different local languages, with more people getting a chance to learn and read. The Early Professional Translation in the early professional translation, there was little regard for translation accuracy. This was the period of translation adaptation, as there was still no accuracy in the translation of individual words. 
For example, when a translator did not understand a word's meaning when translating, they would skip it entirely. This gave the translators a lot of control over their audiences, since they ended up shaping the texts that the people read. Translation studies in the academic discipline. Studying translation in the academic discipline became a concept around the 1950s, when institutions were introduced. The institutions allowed cross-cultural interactions and knowledge sharing where people from different languages gathered to learn how to translate. Now, machine translation, MT, has been widely adopted to enhance and ease translation, with translators worldwide being aided by computers. It involves the application of language science and computers to the development of translation. It is the computerized system responsible for attaining translations either with or without human assistance. Translation and the globalization of the economy. Due to the Industrial Revolution, the rapid development of the economy evolved into new machinery that allowed swifter and easier production of texts, creating the need for companies to translate and enter into foreign markets. Tracing back to the 18th century, translation helped globalize the economy, with many businesses benefiting from formalized translation services. The development of machine translation and the internet has completely revolutionized the ability to translate, access, and understand documents worldwide. Translation in society today. Today, translators now have several tools, such as the internet and laptops at their disposal to aid in the translation process. Translation services have also become of massive importance in society, as the world becomes increasingly interconnected through the economy, education, sharing of knowledge, and trade. Seeing how far translation has come through the years, we can gain an appreciation for the strenuous translation work done by the early translators in history. In addition, we're glad for the more accurate and widely available translations that we have today. We thank all the translators that work hard to keep the world moving forward. Applied Linguistics Group uploaded this video for BS English students. Dr. Khalid Malik, the founder, has a PhD in Applied Linguistics TESOL. Having more than 25 research papers, he taught at many foreign universities and is now in a postdoctoral study program abroad. Join Applied Linguistics Group at youtube.com slash at 1966 Pakistani or use a QR code to join our Facebook group at